Esposito, thank you for your time and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How is it going? Come on, on a day like today, I can't be doing any better than I got you here, buddy. This is fabulous. Hey, look at that. Smooth criminal. <laughs> what's up? What's up? Thanks for having me, man. No, of course. I, I was following your uh, social media stuff there. You had a, a pretty big audition, in my opinion, not too long ago that you had posted. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? I can't. I can't. <laughs> but let's just say, let's just say it is uh, an audition for a massive company that has a lot of the superhero uh franchises under now so that's all i could say starts with a d <laughs> fair enough well, <laughs> listen you're you're the founder of the movie expo and not many people know of the movie expo and certainly i go every year i'm sure you, you've seen my face and are tired of it by now <laughs> but for those who don't know what the movie expo is where can they get more information and where can they learn about this so the movie expo is something that was created from a journey of struggle, perseverance, and passion. And being in the industry for over 20 years now, I've seen how a lot of people, especially in the city, um, which is Toronto, there's a lot of talent and a lot of people that will go to school, they will get the, their degrees, they have the passion, but where do you go from there? And that is kind of the, the, the missing link, the missing gap. So my partner and I sat together and said, listen, we know the struggle. We know the light. We had hoped somebody was there to shine down the line for us and at the end of that tunnel for us. Why don't we be that light? Why don't we be that guide? We, we can only show you and take you so much, but, but at least we'll guide you to the door. Um, and that's how the Movie Expo was born. So in a nutshell, the Movie Expo is currently the largest networking and educational platform in Canada. Um, that highlights, of course, the uh, heroes behind the scenes as well, which includes casting, producing, makeup artists, stunts, uh, coaches, agents, all the people, writers. I mean, the list goes on. Composers, the, 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 the list truly goes on and on and on. But it is the unsung heroes that typically the focus is on the stars, the focus is on the people that are in front of the camera but we also wanted to pay respect and tribute and really shine a light on all the stars that make it happen behind the scenes so all put together we've got you know this opportunity that truly helps you network with the people that can um, offer you the opportunity for your next gig for your next audition for your next job and the ultimate dream is for every year a bunch of people to get together that are talented creative wear different hats and to continuously keep creating together because it is a very collaborative process and that's ultimately why the expo was there and if you want to find out any more information of course you could google movie expo or you could go movie-expo.com and you'll get all the information you need on there now most of our viewers when they look at acting and they see it as a job or a career path and you mentioned there are a lot of many hats and you and i certainly know this but for those who don't when we look at putting together a movie production and we hire on the actors and you know it's the hurry up and wait scenario in your uh, opinion when we look at the multitude of hats and the multitude of jobs that are there it's not just about acting and writing what other opportunities in your opinion are, are at the movie expo that people can kind of connect with honestly every single thing from a to z and i'm not tooting our horn it truly is we and the very first year when we had it in person before the pandemic kicked in, we had different stations and different zones. So basically, say, for example, we had one that was called the danger zone. And if you were curious to know how stunts worked, uh, how rigging worked, how the special effects worked, how the training or what style to go and learn, even if you were an amateur, a brand new person that's never thrown a, a kick or a punch in their life, you would go to that zone and they could rig you up and you understand how it works. And, and you know, you will get demos with uh, how real fighting could be very different than real fighting, meaning on action and on camera uh, is very different than if you're fighting, say, in an octagon at, 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 during the UFC. 
And, and if you wanted to understand the makeup, there was different kinds of makeup. So we called it the transformation way, right? And within the transformation way, because you could go in looking the way we do, and you could come out looking like you're 80 with special effects makeup, <laughs> or they could add dreads on you, or they could give you scars and cuts. Uh, or we, we had the guys that that, that uh, created the, the Predator mask. So we had it there and how the, the where the inspiration came from. So every single department you could think of had its journey and had its professionals that, that truly told you why they got into it, who inspired them to get into it, and how you could follow that path. And of course, the importance of it and how it's really, really, truly important. Sure, you could do a lot of stuff in post-production nowadays in editing, but how much easier would it be if a lot of the stuff was done in, in reality or on set so it saves you some time in editing and in post-production and of course you don't have to deal with the typical we'll fix it in post right <laughs> so it's really 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 awesome for anyone that truly was looking to get into music looking to get into writing into casting even into training the professionals how how they get fit say for example we had uh, uh thor and rocky's trainer right he was there and he's like this is what i did for rocky which was different for hemsworth which was different for uh, 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 Bruce Willis for Die Hard, and then uh, you know we I worked with Affleck as a, a completely different way because these guys wanted to lean out. He wanted to bulk up for Batfleck, and this is his sleep pattern. This is the test he had to go through. This is his nutrition. So that's that's those are truly the people that make it happen for the screen. And 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 really, we just sit here and we take it for granted. We're like, oh man, look at him. He looks amazing. But you, you totally forget that for Superman, for Iron Man to be really impressive, who came up with the costume idea and how many tries did it take and who made this this uh, this suit fly or float or, or a pulse rays or whether it's a laser from the, from the eyes. It would be extremely boring if you didn't have the respective teams and departments taking care of their jobs and being professionals at it. And that was ultimately the best thing when it was in person. And again, we share a certain part of that during the the uh, virtual uh, uh, hybrid that we've 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 had to kind of adapt to during the pandemic in a sense where. It is such an exciting journey that even if you are not in the film industry, you are not looking or aspiring to become a performer or a filmmaker. My mother had fun. You know, we've had producers that came in that were, yeah, we 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 dish out the money or we uh, rack up and 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 bring the talent on set, but we've never seen the chasing car from John Wick or what kind of crane or what kind of camera was used. And literally it's like being at, at the, <laughs> you know, the chocolate factory, right? It's, it's, it's wow, 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 wow. And that's ultimately what it is. And people truly, even when they go in and they come out, they leave with a completely different set of eyes and respect to the industry. That it is very serious. It is a very tough industry. And that a lot of it, there's a lot that goes into creating one movie that ends up being 60 seconds or 60 minutes or 90 minutes. There's a lot of heart. There's a lot of thought. There's a lot of planning. Let's just say that's the tip of the iceberg that goes into it. And of course, talent behind that in front of the scenes. Now, speaking of wow, I mean, it's a lot of ambition and passion to be in the industry to start with and then create the movie expo that you've done here. It, it's uh, the amount of ambition and passion that you have you can hear it in your voice as you're as you're speaking but when you say you know the wow you actually have two published books out on amazon uh one what? is <laughs> no to wow budget and the other is zero to hero so when we talk about these no to wow budgets perfect and the zero to hero tell us the difference between the two of them what was the drive behind writing these so when the pandemic hit a lot of my friends uh were thinking about quitting the industry. And I was like, hold on a second, listen, I understand. It's really tough as it is. Now you have the pandemic that minimizes the crew and the cast that's on set. It minimizes the auditions. It minimizes how many productions are, are happening at a time because of restrictions. Why don't you use it to build? This is a great time instead of just sitting there and saying, well, I'm busy. Yeah, sure. I've always wanted to write something, but I'm busy. Oh, I always wanted to. I wish I could have. I was like, stop wishing. 
here's my journey of filmmaking when times were really slow for me as a as an actor when i first started off i signed up with an agent at an agency actually and they said you're probably going to have one or two auditions every three to six months and i was like hell no not happening because i was hungrier than that so nothing wrong with waiting but it wasn't me so if you come on as my agent i'm like cool now there's two sharks in this pond and i'm still going to be hunting and i'm still going to be hungry and no matter how much work i've done i always remember my first day and that keeps me hungry that keeps me humble and it keeps me going because if you cruise control you're going to have someone that will be where you were on your first day super hungry super ambitious and they're going to zoom right past you and you're going to be like what the hell what just happened right i was ahead of that person but you decided to take it easy and cruise control or sit and wish and hope something dropped on your lap so i i, I kind of came up with this perspective and they said you know what that's great and i was like listen you guys are actors i get it but i'm pretty sure nine out of ten of you guys had at least wished to be cast in something you still haven't been cast in whether it's a dramatic role an action role a lead role why don't you write something and shoot it and of course that was a great idea, but followed up by, well, I don't know what camera to use. I don't know what lens I should have. I don't know about lighting. I don't know about cinematography. And even if I'm there, who else is going to come that will do that for me? And that's when the first book came about. And I said, it's how to make it from a no to a budget, which literally my first few projects, zero budget, mm -hmm. full transparency. I told everyone that was on board what they were getting, which was... 1080 obviously that was super impressive at the time when we started back in 08 and, and 09 and i was like this is what you're going to get in return reels and footage of you having facetime not background and whatever it is you needed to be highlighted whether you were a makeup artist you were going to get your behind the scenes footage whether you were a stunt performer you were going to get yourself falling and taking the hits and delivering the blows if you were an actor, you were going to get some FaceTime at least at least 30 seconds, which you could chop up however you see fit for your demo reel. And obviously, I failed a lot. But then through doing, I learned a lot. And I put all my mishaps and all my successes and how I made it and how now, thanks to social media, it's become almost the norm. Every single one of us has it. Almost every single one of us has a smartphone or smart device that can shoot it can edit it can upload from one device before you had to shoot it on one figure if another device could understand this or you needed certain plugins and certain wires and it was such a hassle but now there's no excuse and literally everyone is a writer everyone is an editor everyone is a composer at some at some level and everyone is a filmmaker at some level slash performer right even the challenges that come up on TikTok and instagram and the other platforms right think of it something as simple as you taking a family photo and telling grandma and grandpa and dad and mom and cousin hey a little closer a little closer okay all right that's it that's it that's directing already you're a director unofficially right so i changed that perspective and i shared everything they needed literally from understanding how to storyboard understanding how to find talent, how to get locations for, for next to nothing, communication planning. The Obviously, if you have some form of budget, how you can get a camera, if you've got your phone, how you can use it, understanding lighting. And of course, one of the most important things is thinking the business side, which is a loophole that a lot of us have fallen in, including myself at the very beginning. We're very creative. We all want to create stuff. We love it. And we'll do it for free. But at some point, we got to understand we got to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. And the idea here, which I share, is after you've done your shorts, you could use that as a POC or a proof of concept to leverage that. For festivals, of course, you've got that. But at the same time, now you could directly approach agents or, or streaming platforms or investors and say, listen, here's what I could do for next and nothing. Would you guys be willing to? give me 500 bucks or $5,000 or whatever it is, the amount and rinse and repeat with different people. 
because at the end of the day, we're creative. So we could understand if I come here and tell you how I'm going to shoot it, how I'm going to edit it and how it's going to look by the end of it. But a lot of the money people, unfortunately, are not that creative. They're numbers people. And yeah. it's just like anything else. They want to see the potential. And that kind of breaks it down all in here with a few bonus free softwares that you could use, whether it's writing, editing, cinematography, uh, color grading, all that kind of fun stuff. So it's all in here. And that's kind of how this was born. And I was super, super happy to see a lot of people literally read that and and go make their movies and it entirely changed their their mindset from almost quitting to saying listen i've always been told what to do what if i could understand how to give and make the calls and how to edit and how to stand and in fact it made a lot of people better actors better performers mm -hmm. because now you realize wow if you're standing there for half an hour and they're adjusting lighting or framing you're like what's taking so long when you're on the other side, you get it and you understand why if someone's like, all right, just hold it there and you go reach for something, you come back, you're here and it's a completely different uh, focus now. And you understand that. So it makes you better, makes you sharper as a performer overall. So that's the first one. And then the second one over here, a lot of people wanted to get into action and that's why I called it Zero to Hero. And it breaks it down in a nutshell from understanding what works in real life, what works for film, uh, similarities, differences, safety for guns, safety for weapons, uh, how to capture it, how to shoot it, how to edit it, different <clears> styles, <throat> what's the best style, right. Hong Kong versus Hollywood, how to edit it, quick edits, camera shake, keeping it steady, nice and clean. And uh, it's for all levels and it really has everything, including stretches at the very beginning. Old school how you could do it. So if you're not flexible, don't worry. I know a lot of times people see this and like, well, I'm not flexible, I'm not strong enough. I was like, don't worry, that's why the book is there or that's why you can take a class, right? So that's the story behind these two books. Beautiful. We, we gotta take a quick break, but we'll be right back. <laughs> 